Hey, what's going on? I am back with video number two. Um, I told y'all I was coming, and now I'm here. All right. <laughs> Yo, well, first and foremost, I want to say thank you guys so much for all the love that you gave me on the first video. I honestly did not expect for it to get that much love. I saw people <laughs> from all over hitting me up, commenting, sharing. Um, random, random kids have been like DMing me. Random people have been hitting me up. Um, and I appreciate all of it. Much more coming. <laughs> Thank you guys for receiving me so well and listening to what I have to say. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, man, uh, it's, it's, it's heartwarming. So, thank you guys so much. And here we go. Video number two. All right. In the first video, I just talked about things that I do when I'm arranging um, certain tricks, certain stuff that I do. So, in video number two, I'm going to take it all the way back to the beginning. Right, when I really first started arranging, um, for real, for real, when I took my first arranging class in college under Mr. Lindsey B. Sargent at FAMU, we walked in the door, the first thing he said was, do you guys know what a sketch is? And we're like, yeah, we know what a sketch is, sure, it's the thing, it's an outline, it's a rough draft, yeah, whatever. Nah, we, <laughs> we didn't know what a sketch was. So, with, with arranging, um, he taught us about the three-line sketch and how every, every, song from Beethoven's Knife to May Out of Little Lamb started with a sketch with an outline and then expanded it to the full ensemble and he taught us how to do that and I'm going to show you guys what I learned but before I do that make sure you subscribe to the page follow me on Instagram Twitter Facebook uh, Pinterest um, um, Periscope um, Jam Card just follow me at Mutali Music I follow back so I'm almost at a thousand subscribers, like that's crazy. Um, I've gotten a hundred plus in the past like three days, which is freaking phenomenal, right? So uh, <laughs> if I can get to a thousand, yo, I would be like the happiest guy in 2020. Like, <laughs> all right, so please help me do that. Um, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. And let's get into it, all right? All right, so y'all know, um, the computer is a fairly new invention, right? So back in the day, before computers, before Finale, Sibelius, MuseScore, before all that, people had pens and paper. <laughs> it kind of sound um, archaic to now, but um, people had pen and paper and they wrote their arrangements on pen and paper and they took it to a centralized location, maybe in a library in somebody's office, um, maybe like one or two computers in the whole city that had access to something that can print score and, and you can input notes and stuff. It was a typewriter for, like a typewriter, like you're typing a letter, except with music, and then it's, it's a lot of crazy stuff. So really, it's, 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 you look it up. So back in the day, they had that. And before anybody went to the computer to input their notes and print it out for the masses, they started with a three-line sketch. The first line, of course, was all the soprano, all the woodwinds. The second line, had the tenor and the alto lines and the third line of course had the bass. From those three lines of music it expanded into the full score that you may see on, on a regular piece of music. And it's kind of crazy how you can see everything so compacted and see how it works together and see how notes work with each other and see how parts bounce off each other and see how Pretty much all the music is in intertwined between soprano, alto, tenor, and bass. And it's a really cool concept. So when I first started arranging, it kind of opened my mind up to see music differently and to interpret it certain ways and stuff like that. And that's what the three-line sketch has, has helped me with. And I try to implement it as much as I can. It's kind of time-consuming and tedious when doing it by hand. Um, but it definitely works. I recommend it for all of my new arrangements coming up. Yo, three line sketch, pretty necessary. Let's do it. So now I'm gonna show you guys how to set up a three line sketch off of Finale. And yeah, let's do it. So open up Finale, go to Finale. All right, so this is very important. Every band, well every marching band needs three things, right? They need a trumpet, a trombone, and a tuba. Anything else is supplementary, it's extra, it's, it's sauce on top. It's whatever other analogy you wanna use, right? The only necessary things in any marching band is a trumpet, trombone and tuba or in percussion whatever so when you set up the three lines the first line you set up trumpet second line trombone and third line tuba so all the alto lines um alto and horn lines will be on the trombone line 
as you will see in a couple of seconds all right what you see on the screen right now is all you need for a through line sketch and literally it's this simple this is all you need it is a huge score of music condensed into three lines and that's what you have you have for the trumpet part the soprano line the trombone part you have the trombone um tenor alto lines and the tour part across the bass line you set it up kind of just like you would a normal song i like to start with the bass first so i will put the bass um the bass line in it just like the other song just like this and bam okay normal bass line just like that so for the next part of course you put the trombone part the trombone baritone alto and horn part all on the one trombone line and it looks something like this all right cool we got that so here's the next part you put the alto line um you put the alto and horn line on the trombone part when it comes in so for the first three or four measures um the alto and horns put the whole notes and you leave that you, you don't have to do anything with that because it's already there in the trombone part so when the alto line breaks off into its own line put that in the trombone part all right so i will make another layer and show you like this i'll do all the beams up to make sure you can see where it breaks off at all right so yeah so now we just added the alto line to the trombone line well the tenor lines and now you can see how they work together and kind of feed off each other and play play around with the chorus structures and stuff like that yeah i made it these kind of ugly mustard color so it really stands out so that's how the alto line works with the trombone line and all that and lastly you add of course the soprano lines to it so here are the soprano lines added as the last line of the sketch and this is the entire arrangement so before i did any arrangement um i don't do it as much as i used to but i still do it from time to time it definitely helps you put a lot of things into perspective so for instance it lets you see the three most important lines of any band right next to each other and you can look for things like for instance the first trumpet first trombone and tubas should never be on the same note at the same time ever um unless of course you can't fight it if it's a, if it's in a melody or something like that but as far as if you have chords in the trumpet chords in the trombone and tuba line the the first trombone first trumpet and first well and tuba should never be on the same note and this is a good way to visualize that just in case it happens so for instance the tubas on the c the trombones on the high e flat of course the trumpets are resting it's just a good rule of thumb to never have your strongest players on, on the same note of course become off balance and stuff like that so looking at a sketch is the best way to visualize that because everything's so compact and you're able to see where things are in relation to something else in such close proximity you can find errors and and notes errors and chords and so yeah it might sound kind of janky um because everything is on <laughs> the trombone line but it's, it's, it's listen to it. it sounds it should sound pretty much the same And yeah, that's how you perform a three line sketch. Yeah, super simple concept. It really helps you understand how many parts there really are in, in, in a song. Like it's no more than like three or four. Maybe a fifth one when you add the woodwind parts and you can put the woodwind parts. If there are woodwind parts, put it in soprano. Just kind of how I did the alto lines and the trombone line. And of course the tuba line by itself at the bottom. Basic three line sketch. Some people call it a four line sketch or a five line sketch if you have the woodwind and the alto separate. Yeah man, every piece of music that you hear on Saturdays can be condensed into this smaller version. And it has everything you need. And it's a very, very cool tool and technique to learn how things work together when arranging. And learn how harmonies work and all that good stuff. Learn how to balance a chord and you know all that stuff comes along with through line sketches. It's a very cool, useful tool. Um, I would advise everybody, especially if you're starting out arranging, to start with the through line sketch. Like I said, you can Google, you can Google sketch paper and it'll come up. A thousand different links will come up. You can download them all for the free ski, print you out some, label it kind of like this. 
trying to zoom in. Yeah, trumpets, woodwinds, alto horn, trombone. When the alto line breaks off, you can label right here when the alto line breaks off. Alto line, you feel me? <laughs> like something super simple to make sure you know what's going on when it's going on. Definitely label everything. It helps out with identifying where things are and why things are there. And that's pretty much it. And that is how you make a three line sketch. All right. So yeah, thank you guys for joining me in video number two and the series. I'm, I'm gonna try to do one a week, all right? Until I get super busy and I won't be able to. But I'm gonna try to do one a week. Make sure you subscribe. Much more, much more coming. Share it to anybody that's interested. All my young, my range is coming up. Yeah, yeah, share it to your homies, share it to your friends, tell your band directors, everybody, all right? Uh, anybody know that's interested, let them know. Tune in. I'm gonna try to post one like every Saturday. I'm gonna try to do it. I'm gonna try to do it, all right? Yeah, that's pretty much it, man. Stay tuned for next week. Really cool video about voice settings and why certain things sound the way they sound. I'll, I'll give great examples and all that good stuff. So, um, stay tuned. Yeah. So after every single one of these videos, I will play a video of an arrangement I've done and how it's relevant to this video. Um, so the video I'm gonna play after this in like five seconds is my final project when I took arranging um, at FAMU at Mr. Sergeant. So the final project was arrange a version of the Christmas song. So Nat King Cole, right, Nat King Cole. It was in winter time, we were, we were about to go home for break. Yeah, so that was the assignment. My class had three people in it. Shout out to the homies. Class had three people in it. I was the only one that got an A. All right, so check it out. It's a very, very cool arrangement of the Christmas song. If you want it, hit me up. It's very, very cool. I just say check. Just, just stay tuned. It's, it, it's gonna play. It's cool. Yeah. Oh, and now, um, FAMU plays it every year at Christmas since I wrote it uh, about five or six years ago. It's really cool to have something that your college and university continues to play for years after you've left and moved on and. And it kind of warms my heart every time I hear them play it. Every single Christmas. And it's a cool, it's a cool song. Shout out to you, Dr. Chipman, uh, Mr. Sergeant, everybody at FAMU. Turn up, we lit. Check it out. <laughs> Thank you.